let's interpret the results of our independent samples t-test that we obtained in the previous video. Now a t-test compares means and we're comparing the mean total competency score of males to the mean total competency score of females. And you can see from this table that the mean for females is slightly higher than the mean for males. Now the t-test helps us establish did this mean just happen by chance in our sample or does this difference exist in the population? So of all males and females, do females tend to have a higher average competency than men in the population? Our next column is standard deviation, and this shows us the spread of the data. So on average, how far um, are the total competency scores deviating from the mean? And we can see that the spread of the data is very similar for males and females. Our next table, are our t-test results. And you can see here that we have two lines of results to choose from. We have equal variances assumed and we have equal variances not assumed. And we need to determine which line of results is most appropriate for us to read. And we do this using Levine's test for equality of variances. Now this test is asking, is the variance of scores similar between our two groups? Basically, it's saying, is the shape of the distribution of competency scores for males similar in shape to the distribution of competency scores for females? Now, just like any other statistical test, we've got a null hypothesis, H0, and an alternate hypothesis, H1. We determine whether to accept H0 or reject it in favor of H1 using our p-value, which is here in the sig column. H0, or our null hypothesis, says that the variances of the males and females are not different. So that would mean equal variances assumed. Our alternate hypothesis says that the variances of the males and females is significantly different. And if that's true, we need to read equal variances not assumed. Now our p-value is 0.60. And we're going to compare that to our alpha value. My alpha value that I've chosen is 0 0.05, but you can use whichever val alpha value you've chosen, such as 0 0.01. If our p-value is less than our alpha value, 0 0.05 in this case, we're going to reject H0 and accept H1, which means the variances are different, so we're not going to assume they're equal. But for our case, p-value is greater than 0 0.05, so we're going to accept H0. This means our variances are not significantly different, so we can assume they're equal. And we're going to read off the line equal variances assumed. If we go across this line, our t-statistic is minus 0 0.838 with 68 degrees of freedom, and our p-value is 0 0.405. You can also see the mean difference. This is obtained by taking the first group and subtracting the second group. So 40.94 minus 43.69, and that will give us a minus 2.757. And if we look over to the far right, we have a confidence interval for the difference. This interval is for this value here, which will be right in the middle of that confidence interval. And it says that 95% of the time, the difference in scores will be between minus nine and three, which means sometimes men will be less than women, sometimes women will be less than men. Now our sig value here, this is what we're gonna use to interpret our results. And we're gonna look at our t-test results. Now this is a table again that I've added in. It doesn't come out with SPSS. Just like with any other statistical test, we've got a null hypothesis which says there's no difference and an alternate hypothesis which says there is a difference. And we're going to look at comparing our p-value to our alpha value. So if p is less than 0 0.05, we're going to reject H0 and accept H1. So the means are different from each other. But if it's greater than 0 0.05, we're going to accept H0 and say the means are not significantly different. And if we look at our p-value, it's 0 0.405, so that is much bigger than 0 0.05. So we need to accept H0, the means are not significantly different. So even though in our sample the, the females tended to have a higher average competency, this just happened by chance and we cannot generalize this to the population. You'll notice here in the SIG column that it says two-tailed, and that means our p-value is only for a two-tailed test. So what do we do when we've got a one-tailed test? Well, we have a look here. It depends on your hypotheses, whether you do two-tailed or one-tailed. Now, two-tailed just says there's a difference. So in our case, males and females have different competency scores. 
for a one-tailed test, we're making a specific claim about the difference. So in our case, we would say something like females are more competent than males. And if we have a one-tailed alternate hypothesis, what we need to do in our output is take this p-value and divide it by 2. So that would make our p-value about 0.2. It still is bigger than 0.05, so we're still going to accept h0, but we would need to report the halved p-value of 0.2 instead of 0.405.